Hello and welcome back. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're watching Sydney Direct on Dukoscopy TV. The IMF have commented recently regarding the tightening of fiscal policy to balance out those falls in commodity prices. Well, I spoke to mining analyst David Lennox of Fat Profits to find out his thoughts on the matter. David Lennox, it's always a pleasure to receive you. Welcome back to Dukoscopy TV. Thank you, Natalie, and certainly I love to chat. Thank you so much. Okay, so international bourses received a lot of support last week from those rallies in commodity prices. Is this sustainable though? Look, that's a really good question. At this point in time, we probably suggest that uh, we've seen the best of the rallies now. We think that uh, the, the rally is not as sustainable as perhaps markets are thinking, and primarily for two reasons. A, the China story. We still haven't seen China actually putting out figures that suggest that their rate of growth is decelerating and slowing. And also the US dollar. We've seen the US dollar come off primarily because the Fed hasn't raised interest rates for 2015 and it looks as though they're not going to for the rest of this year. So both of those two factors are certainly still in play and we think while that's the case it's going to be difficult for commodities to actually put in a sustainable rally in prices. Now you touched there on China and last week we did in fact see iron ore futures rally to three year highs in um, China. It was quite significant. Um, with that said though, I mean, is this sort of a, a, a light of optimism then in a country which is, has been pretty uncertain in recent performance? No, look, we would suggest that we probably saw more of a just a technical create a reaction to what had been happening in the broader commodities market space and that was as we suggested in the earlier question that we did see that rally and that optimism did flow through to the iron ore sector and it did push the prices up however it still is very much for iron ore a China story and as we've seen over the last well for this year the last 10 months we've seen no signs that China is showing signs of deceleration in its rate of slowing growth. So until that happens, it again will be very difficult for the iron ore market to actually put in any sustainable rally in the pricing. We're very pleased that it has come off, off, off the bottom and that is because there is that little bit of optimism there but not enough to really push in a rally that would be quite sustainable into the future. Now the IMF have been quite vocal on their guidance regarding this commodity price complex that we're seeing at the moment and they've really emphasised not to tighten fiscal policy in response to that commodity price activity and instead of emphasising in fact monetary policy should remain pretty loose in order to fill those output gaps. Would you agree on this outlook or I feel you've got a bit to say on this? How long have we got? Look, I guess primarily the IMF are probably suggesting that if you're a resource focused company on physical policy, they would say don't spend the revenue full tilt. In other words, leave a little bit in the gap, in the, in the bank, so that when revenues or the cycling commodities is weaker, then you've got that little bit aside. So on the physical side of the policy, we certainly agree with the IMF. Make sure that you broaden your revenue base so that you're not focused purely on getting revenue in from one resource or from one sector, i.e. resources, but broaden it out across many, many sectors so that you've got many inputs of re revenue coming in. On the monetary policy, it's a little more difficult because monetary policy can impact not only just, unfortunately, the resources sector, but it can re impact the broader economies as well. A and to just say that you, you'd keep monetary policy loose so that the resources sector can either go into oversupply or undersupply it is probably really not the sort of approach that most reserve banks would be uh, taking when it comes to looking at their, their monetary policy settings. So overall, physically on the fiscal policy we would agree with the IMF, yes, don't put all your eggs into one basket. On the monetary policy side, we'd suggest that it's, it's certainly a wider field that you should be looking at rather than just focusing on resources. So if we look at sort of how this activity is actually feeding through into sort of share market performance, what are some of the resources stocks that are kind of catching your eye at the moment? I mean, Origin Energy, for example, last week soared up 26%. Where are you looking at the moment? Look, at the moment, we've been fairly focused on the energy sector. 
We do believe that when you have a look at the longer term outlook for energy, there is certainly a lot to be said for the growth profile that we can see in that sector. So that's obviously got us focusing on energy companies, the likes of Santos and Tullow and Shell. At this point, we're still looking at BP, but you know, there's some hope there, we believe. And we're also then looking at companies like uh, the Diversifieds in Rio and BHP. So they're really the big end of town that we are looking at. And that's still primarily because we want to focus on companies that have got very strong balance sheets, have got very long life assets, and can use their balance sheet to develop their long life assets and produce uh, future shareholder returns. David, many thanks for the update. Natalie, thanks very much. Always a pleasure to catch up with David Lennox at Fat Profits. That's all we've got time for right now, but do stay tuned as the Ducoscopy TV team will be bringing you all of the latest FX analysis and exclusive interviews. From me, though, it is goodbye for now.